Um, and also nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Sick. Uh, so how are you, first of all? Pretty good. You know, over here it's 2.30, so it's, it's like the late afternoon of my like Friday at work. So it's a nice little break from work. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. I'm glad. That, well, I really appreciate you taking the time, making it, uh, making this happen. Um, cause I know that our schedules can conflict with each other's, especially on different coasts. So, um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, dude, um, first of all, I think this is the first form terror Friday that I've had the chance to talk to someone that's more prominently in a band like I, I like Matt Stickers and Drouth um, and you know a couple other guys were in bands but this is like special to me because like specifically I fucking love your bands <laughs> oh thanks man yeah hell yeah man. that's really uh, really cool to hear yeah I I mean like I'm just uh, I, I feel like I'm just gonna like draw a blank because I'm uh, too much in my mind right now but uh for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Chase Laker is the guitarist of Mortiferum. And it is Mortiferum, right? Let's settle some fucking bets right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so when when we came up with the name, or I should say Max came up with the name, okay. we all said Mortiferum for the longest time. When we started playing out more and, like, uh, traveling, almost everyone was saying Mortiferum. And, like, a lot of, like, Europeans were saying Mortiferum. Yeah. I think it's probably more closer to being accurate to say it that way. So now I kind of say it both ways. Um, <laughs> so you're okay. But originally it was, we all said mortiferum. Yeah, I just feel like I still it, feel a little awkward saying mortiferum. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like a little, pu like pushing it a little too far as far as pronunciation with that. But it's funny because I know like people have called it mortiferum. And I'm like, that sounds silly. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I can I can say conclusively that it's it's not that. Yeah, good. It's not more to so fear. Everyone that thinks so, you're wrong. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite is uh, more to Fernum. So. so did you start the band, or what did you say, Max? Or um, it's I mean it's a little bit. It's not. It's a. I didn't. I definitely didn't start it myself. Like it was a collaborative effort to start okay. the band. Max, I you know had played in a band with Max prior to that. And we had kind of for a, quite a while talked about doing a band. We had actually kind of played guitar together and, you know, worked on some riffs. Yeah. We sort of like had a vague notion of that we wanted to do a death metal band that was a little different style, sure. more down, more down tuned. Yes. Um, and, you know, eventually we got serious about it and ended up, uh, you know, we, we both knew, Alex Modi, who ended up becoming the drummer, he was down and just kind of took off from there. We started off with a different bassist, Dan Freed, who's still, you know, still a good friend of ours and does design work for us, plays in a yeah. bunch of sick bands. Um, but he lived in Seattle and it was hard to like, you know, make that really work long, long term. So we ended up getting Tony on bass and been solid ever since. And cool, man. that's how it, that's how it happened. That's rad. I uh, I gotta say, shout the fuck out to Alex, the drummer. I love his style. Like it's right up my alley. That groove that he just like hits it hits me right here and fucking all that double bass groove and that symbol, that iconics, that symbol that just like sticks out like <laughs> a mortiferum symbol. Like, what is that symbol? It's not a ride, right? It's like a trash, <laughs> like a trash. Yeah, I. I I feel I'm a little reluctant to give away the secret, but it, I and I don't actually know what exactly what kind of ride it is. Okay. But it is it is a ride symbol, and you know it's been a couple of different ride symbols, but it's like super oxidized looking and like just trashy looking. It looks like it's been left outside. Right on. It sounds um, amazing. It's such a sick fucking tone, and I understand and appreciate and respect why you wouldn't want to say that because some fucking band will go and get the same symbol or do the same thing and then it won't be special you know yeah so i get that oh yeah and um, i mean mostly i was kind of joking mostly because i don't i don't really know exactly i don't know what the name of it is <laughs> you should have been like, i'm not a drummer going, and you're not gonna know <laughs> yeah right on that's sick cool. um but yeah, yeah thanks like alternative alternative decay the demo 
is is rad but i gotta say like the 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 scourge uh through psychotic depths um i don't know just everything came together so well for that and like that was my introduction to you actually so i worked my way back to the demo but it's it's dude i don't know man it's just crushing the fucking uh the production is amazing and yeah i'm just like gonna sing your praises for a second and then i'll quit kissing your ass (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no i mean thanks i mean it, it's nice to hear that i really i love the demo and i'm proud of it and we all really oh. like it and having yeah, like sick. recorded it it just kind of just turned out turned out in a way that you know we all really liked and kind of something ma- like sort of magical happened with the demo the production um everything about it we just so you know i was i was personally worried about the the album and like trying to capture that again so you did it. I'm, it's good to hear that it. people, you, you know, it's good it. to hear you like, got into it. You pushed it to the, like, the next level, but stayed in that realm. And it's it's always so fucking sick when a band can stay consistent with their sound. And I think you guys capture that really well. And that, mentioning that, um, Preserved in Torment is a new album you're going to be putting out soon. What When's that going to be released? Uh, November 5th, 6th. Let me see. I should definitely know this, but That's I kind of put it on. Yeah, it's in early November, though. Um, but yeah, um, I'm really excited yeah. about that. What's that? I'm really excited about that What's album that? coming out, and I'm stoked for people to hear it. Yeah, profile you know, I think if you like the uh, putting out sick shit, so definitely be on top of uh, when that remember? comes out because yeah. that shit is gonna be thanks, next Matt. Level like. You know the first track you guys released it's 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 already sounding like right the fuck up my alley so uh profound lore mark um so okay now we've kind of gotten the introductions out of the way the uh what you know what as far as the first band that you're in <laughs> we could go on to caustic wound in a little bit but like first of all like let's talk about your paintings for each of these album covers that you've done for more tip room like I love how creepy they are. I love how <laughs> how like hazy and nightmarish they they feel. Um, uh, so I think the my first my introduction to your art was uh, disgorged, and like I didn't know what it was that I was looking at, which is really <laughs> cool to me. I've heard, but it's uh... like this fucking like membrane, like like fucking like veiny. It looks like we're peering through like a corpse that's been like overtaken mm-hmm. by like more viscous, like visceral. I can't. I I don't know. It's, it's sick. What? Where did that direction? Like, what did that? How did that unravel for you? Like, how did you come up with that concept? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, that I've heard a lot of. You know, the ramen comparison always comes up with that. Everyone says it looks like rom- top ramen noodles <laughs> um, or spaghetti. My favorite I've heard so far is haste. It looks like a haystack cookie, like one of those. Like I think you know they're like uh, I don't know. Look up haystack cookie. I will. That's and it's weird. pretty much the same. It's the most dead-on description I've I've seen I've heard so far. <laughs> but yeah, when I when I came up with it, yeah, I'm tired of hearing the spaghetti thing, but. It's still yeah, funny. Fuck you, Dado, um, you spaghetti bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there is. Yeah. Yo, Dado. I said that. I didn't up, even man. see that Dado was any. Fucking killer producer. Recorder, Dado has right? been spearheading the spaghetti Dado, campaign. Say, I'm sorry. I totally stepped over your words. I'm sorry. Say again. Oh no worries. Yeah. Um, how did it take form though? Um, well, part of it was I actually had done the. If if you ever looked at the back cover of that record. That was originally what I had done, intending it to be the album cover. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and it was really my first, like, true attempt at oil painting. And, and one of my first attempts at actually painting since, like, high school. Cool. Which was quite a while ago. Um, the, so I, I made a ton of mistakes and Dang. kind of learned how to paint during during the time I was working on that. My process, I kind of have to get into my process a little bit to explain where it came from. That's where I wanted but to like, go with it. So yeah. walk us through how you so, were going about doing that. Yeah, so so for so for painting, and, and like I've drawn my whole life, you know, I'm like started off drawing. Painting is just more recent. 
the hardest thing for me is always just starting a piece. Like I'm horrible at visualizing and planning out a finished design and then just executing it. And I get like horrible blocks when I try to actually sit down and do a drawing, especially I like pen relate. and ink. I appreciate that. I can relate to that. Yeah. I and mean, then like your stuff, you know, with, with, with line drawing, especially pen, it's like, I start and I have a vague idea of what I want to do. And then the whole time it's just like ditch digging and like torture, like don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up. And like, you know, desperately trying not to have to get white out and like fix stuff. And it's yeah, just kind of sucks. Like, and it almost, it, it made it kind of hard for me to even sit down and do art because it was like starting to feel like shitty. And I, I just didn't have the patience for it. And when I started painting, what I basically, I had heard people saying like, uh, I've heard this technique of like kind of toning the, the canvas so you're not just painting straight on white because that sucks. Yeah. And I actually did that, but I kind of did like a mix of colors and made it all swirly and it just had a nice texture to it. And then I just, yeah. when, when I looked, I started to see things in the texture, sort of like if you stare at a stucco ceiling or something like that, yeah. you know, like a popcorn ceiling and you see shapes in it. Definitely. And I've always had a tendency to, to see, you know, faces everywhere. And like, if I look at a tree, I see it looks like a horse or some shit. Yeah. So I, so I basically made the canvas look like that. And then I just started kind of following whatever it, I saw in it until awesome. it turned into the, the back cover. And that's honestly how I always paint. I kind of just try to rely on my subconscious and just kind of following the weird textures I see in the canvas. And then it I leads. It. Yeah. Um, and the, when it actually, so I, finished, I did the back cover that way. And then the front cover that ended up on the album was actually supposed to just, I was thinking it'd just be a border, like for the back. And so I just took a canvas I had laying around and like gessoed over it really shittily and started making this border. But when I did my little texture thing again, I ended up following that until I had a whole painting again. Um, and then when it came time to actually decide, we, we figured, you know, with some input from Dan and just the band's input that the, the front in that, would make a better, the one with the portal yeah. in the middle would make a better front cover. And it had kind of a more central, centralized focal point. Right, yeah. It worked that, better that, as a that, cover. So you like kind of weighed, it, weighed uh, what the composition looked like from the first piece and kind of felt like it was gonna be a more prominent, it was gonna take a better uh, seat as the front cover. Yeah. That's awesome. As a well, painting, yeah, I man, feel- like, I can totally relate to kind of relying on your subconscious to just like let things kind of fall uh where where they seem to like fit and i totally understand like what it feels like to be like on edge about like not fucking up mm -hmm. because you don't want to have mm -hmm. to like white shit out and have it be like this like crazy mess and like yeah i've been there and i think all like beginner artists will get through that if they push through it um and I still make mistakes like all the time. I think most artists do and it, there's really no shame in it. It's just a matter of how you go about finishing the composition, like for it to be something that you can be proud of, you know what I mean? And like, I think that going through all those hurdles, like it, I think it adds to the, like the emotion of each piece that people make because you can see like, you can see the struggle in some in some art and it makes it better you know what i mean mm -hmm. like um, for sure like it just looks like uniquely that person because you you can see it kind of consistently but it's not a bad thing like you know like it's one of those things where it's just like um it's something to be appreciated in in like that own person that own artist right you know what i mean so I definitely love sure. your style that has subconsciously kind of uh, 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 um, manifested itself. Um, mm -hmm. And so like, as far as that being your first venture into like this thing that's kind of started becoming more consistent, like how did you go about like moving? The next one you did was the Hyperdonia split, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry. How did I, well, I guess my question, yes, is like, I did. That was the next one I did. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, I guess my question is like, I, I, well, I guess <clears throat> I feel like at that point, like you, you saw how it was executed that like how your first 
you know, composition of the album cover for Disgorge uh, was done, and you probably, it looked like you applied the same ideas to Hyperdontia uh, mm. Split, and I feel like, I just love that. Like, I think it's really working for like, Thanks, the man. emotion and the, and the feeling, like, like I said, like that, that nightmarish, like, like hellscape that's just like barren and dismal and just like creepy because it's like so isolated like it feels like so um quiet like eerily quiet you know what i mean yeah, yeah. well yeah i mean i i feel like um that sort of thing you're describing is definitely like uh probably comes from me being a huge Bekshinsky fan. Like as far as, so uh, the painter Bekshinsky, the Polish, Polish painter, I might need you to his name's like Zdzisław Bekshinsky. Or, yeah, I feel like yeah. I might not be able to, do you know how to spell that? Yeah, you've definitely seen this dude's art. Um, Most likely. Cause like, I, I'm yeah. Like, just to name a few things that I thought of when I saw, like, I was like, oh, I wonder who his influences are. And I was thinking, um, you know, like more, more like uh, uh, contemporary stuff, I would say like Pablo Girardi a little, like uh, uh, maybe love, love him. from back in some death metal stuff, but like, maybe like, of course, have you, have you ever seen Casper David Friedrich's work? That the name sounds familiar. I would, I'd, I have to look it up. I can't tie an image to the name. So, um, can... um, do you know uh, "Wander Above the uh, the Sea of Fog"? Like it's um, it was a like a Wolves in the Throne Room made a made like a uh, a song about it. I think they titled it that, and it's a title of a piece from Casper David Friedrich. He's like romantic. Era, oh, okay. Like, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Germany. It's just, it's really, it's just oh, like his, yeah. his, his paintings of like, yeah, I'm looking dilapidated his, churches and shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I it's all like a lot of, of sort of dark, yeah, dark yeah. sort of sunsetty, like, yeah. Yeah. I definitely know but what you're talking about. That said, I want to go back to what you were saying as far as your influences are. So, like, that Polish painter, I'm going to have to look up, but. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's my, I mean, it's, that's definitely my biggest influence just in general for, okay. for art is Vikshinsky. Okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I commented in there. Um, oh. his, his first name is hard oh, to pronounce. Yeah, it's yeah, like, I have seen that. I've heard it's okay. like Yiddish Waff. I can't pronounce Polish, um, but Vikshinsky. Yeah. B-E-K-S-I-N. Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's a it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I just want to see like yeah, an example. If you, if you search that, you'll know exactly. Who you, I guarantee you'll know who I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yes. Oh dude, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I've seen he, this before. He, okay, he yeah. did. Yeah, he was super prolific. There's, there, I keep seeing more and more of his stuff that you know i've been a fan of him for a really long time and like still i'm surprised to see more and more of his paintings just show up on the internet that's it's amazing i know i know where i know this from it's the mismore album that i yep. first like looked him up and then he did i think like bell witch and uh, he's done yeah okay so right. so yeah uh, marius uh lewandowski lewandowski has a, has a kind of a similar style and did that bell witch art um okay. also polish definitely like a little not different style but very similar in the in feeling to yeah, Bekshinsky yeah. stuff okay obviously I've definitely like, seen his yeah, art yeah, used for Bekshinsky before right i love okay, that cool. guy's art too Sick, that's awesome. yeah well that that cover i'm glad you like that cover um i pretty much took the same approach um but that time, that one's more like a, I, I try to do, like, I think it's like a style where you paint everything black and white for the most part, and then you glaze color over it. Oh, yeah. Um, 
um, when I did the when I did the the Disgorge from Psychotic Depths covers, by far the hardest thing for me was mixing and matching colors because I, I was really new to it. And oh, we froze. Hold on, we're frozen, guys. It happens. Let's see. All right, we're back. Good. Can you hear me? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I can hear you. Frozen. Yep. Okay. Um, so black and white. So yeah. Go hor- back over it. Yeah. So horrible, horrible lighting in my studio. I remember the first time I actually took one of the, the album cover out of my little painting area into the yeah. sun. I just saw like all this like cloudiness and murky, like just ho- colors that didn't match, blacks that were gray. Right. And that was like a nightmare. And I had to actually redo a lot of stuff. Sure. Um, I have since got a better setup for painting, which I wish I had done in the first place. It would have saved me a lot of time. But because of the struggles I had with just mixing the matching color all the time, it makes it harder to focus on the value. And I was sure. also working on a lot smaller for that 7-inch. So the 7-inch the is like a 14 by 14 or 15 by 15 smaller right. size. Yeah, you sent me that, yeah. Um, yeah, and... I did it black and white that was like, I think, grisaille technique um, and glazed color over it at the end after I'd already done it all. So it's kind of a more muted, subtle color with just kind of a green tint to it. But that made it made it really easy to to focus more on the detail and stuff like that. That's cool. What ended up happening, I think, with that painting is that I ended up just sort of like drawing with paint. So like if I, when I look at that picture now, it's like, this just looks like a you know pen and ink illustrator tried to paint that's interesting so I'm, I'm trying, i feel like that's yeah. what i look like when i paint like paints hard. it's <laughs> really hard for me i like i went to school uh you know and i was in illustration classes and like mm-hmm. uh before you know we even before i even like got into illustration we had like these like classes that were like kind of mandatory no matter what your major was and it was like foundation year and uh we would, you know, like do paintings with acrylic and oil and we had to experiment with all this different stuff. And like, dude, that shit is not easy. Like I really respect people that can do well with painting and colors and it's, yeah, I mean, especially oil paint, that's like, that's a whole beast. Like I've only painted like two or three oil paintings, like full color. I think I did one painting on like, masonite and uh yeah that's what i like do. some like um wipe out like uh sienna uh kind of stuff on like canvas but that's about it like have you ever done any wipe out stuff where you use like turpentine um yeah so i mean really like the it's interesting that you say that because the the album art i did for um preserved in torment i I actually used sort of a wipeout technique to like um, do my whole underpainting and sort of block in the whole like scene. Sorry, I'm trying to plug my phone in. I'm realizing my battery's dropping like extreme <laughs> no, cool. I'd rather you not like <laughs> we'd not lose you than yeah. I'm trying to avert a potential cool, man. <laughs> but, but yeah, so so interesting that you mentioned that because yeah, the wipeout technique like. The way it did the album art for Preserved in Torment was, um, I just like did like a, a a wash, kind of a dilute diluted wash, to put added some mineral spirits to the paint, and just kind of put like a gray tone over the whole canvas, and then using like a rag and different kind of large brushes, mm-hmm. actually did like a wipe wiped away paint to create the the landscape. Nice, that's um, awesome, and really. That My worked super time. well. Say again. That that worked really well. Um, nice. yeah, and it was like excellent. It, it saved me a ton of time, and, and I was able to kind of get a feel for like a. It usually takes me a lot longer to figure out what I'm trying to actually paint, you know. But that with that, I had in about two hours had like the rough scene, and just kind of yeah. from there, just tightened it up and added detail to it. Right. So, so I'm I definitely going to keep doing that. Right. Like I would, it's probably safe to say that like you're starting to develop a technique like where you're sure, sure. Like, yeah. easily able to create these things. 
because of the experience that you're getting. And that's what, you, as an artist, if you just keep pushing, mm -hmm. yeah. you will find a way to go about creating things easier. Obviously, I think that's like anything, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm speaking yeah. to the people that are starting out as artists or looking to be inspired. Like, that's what this show is about, you know what I mean? Like, it's about inspiring people. It's, it, it inspires me. Like, I always take a second to explain, like, why I'm doing this, but, like, yeah, uh, and it's cool because I want different perspectives. I want it to come from people that are learning and people that are like that have learned. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, uh, so I think we have a question from Mark. Uh, yeah, do yeah. Do you do any sketching on the canvas to help guide the process? Um, you know, it's first of all, it's crazy that I'm getting a question from Mark Riddick right now. Yeah, right. Yeah been someone that I've, you know, looked up to for their abilities for a long time. Hell yeah. Fucking cool. Um, but n not really. So it depends on what I'm doing, you know, for if I haven't, if I know what I want to paint, if I have a really specific idea that I'm going for, or someone's told me that they want me to paint something, like if I was going to paint a portrait of someone's dog or something, I would right. sketch it all out and, and, and do that with a pencil. But most of the time when I actually do art, like my, my full paintings for album art, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and so I really That's have okay. to just start making, I just start making marks on the canvas with paint and making and textures and little whirlies. That works too, you know what I mean? Like there's no fucking art police, like <laughs> you, can, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like that's the beauty of it, you know? Like. There's definitely, um, I think there's some guilt that sets in for certain artists that are like making things that aren't like, have this like, uh, this pre-realized like composition in their head or whatever. But I don't think that that's like, cause I battle with that too. I'm like, ah, oh, what is this bullshit? I'm like doodling, like, you know, but like, you gotta remind, like, you gotta remember not to be, like, super hard on yourself about that and just embrace, like you were saying, like, that subconscious, like, the way it comes mm. out. So, and, and yeah. it's obviously proven I know. That to be effective because what you make is original and it's fucking, like I said, like, uniquely you and it looks like it's it's sick, dude. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a couple commissions and, you know, whenever I'm, like, getting agree to do a commission or the bands like explaining what they want i'm always like please don't ask for anything that i have to look up or like i don't want to have to look at reference <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. please don't after buildings you know don't do you know and it's really because like i know that if i had to incorporate like really specific things into the painting that it would it would i would have to like it would kind of screw up my process that i usually use which is sort yeah. of almost yeah, yeah, cheating yeah. totally understand so, yeah. that I've been trying to develop a process that actually would allow me to complete a painting in a reasonable amount of time so <laughs> yeah, that yeah. it's not a complete weight, yeah. you know, like, so I can actually do it. And, you know, yeah, like less direction is you is like helpful for artists that are like more expressive with their style. Like, just let them go. You know what I mean? Just like, let them do their thing. Like it's best when bands, I think we've had this conversation with everyone I talk to everyone that's getting commissions like their favorite commissions are we love your style we trust that you'll make something sick you know what i mean like those are the best words to come out of a commissioner's mouth like not a commission well you know what i'm saying but mm. yeah is that like, yeah, is, is that what it's called then <laughs> what's that <laughs> yeah are they a commissioner at that point yeah i don't know um I think of oh Dedo is asking <laughs> what bands i've done Mr. gordon from fucking um, WB animated Batman series. Uh, anyway, like, yeah, so I want to move on. Uh, you froze for a second, but I want to move on um, from. I, I did one for, other than my own bands, I did one for Morbific, and that album came out, and it's, it's yeah. awesome. Yo, that fucking, like, yeah, I definitely want to take a second to shout, shout out uh, Morbific. Uh, ominous Seep of Putridity. That album is sick, and the artwork was what pulled me in. And that's why we're talking. Like, I, I was like, I was like, holy shit. That's the same kind of art that I've seen somewhere before. And then I was like, I tied it in, and I was like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I realized that that was you. 
and then it just kind of like it all kind of fell together and i was just like i gotta talk to this motherfucker <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, that one that one is cool and the other i've done another commission that is not released yet so i shouldn't say what's nice, for and talk nice. get into detail about it but um and then i have enough i have a couple couple things that are kind of in the works I haven't finished or one of them I haven't started, but I got, you know, sure. I can only take on so many because I, I have a full-time job, bit two bands, mm -hmm. do my own stuff too. So it's, I wish right. I had more time to take on more projects, but that's kind of why I'm hoping to get faster at yeah. it too. No, so I, I mean, can dude, don't stress not yourself too thin. That's like, that's an important thing. Like, don't stretch yourself too thin. That's that's why I have to be so selective about the art that I take on. Like, I have to, like, really want to represent it. And, like, you know, people are understanding when it's, like, not my style. I'm just straight up with them. I'm like, hey, like, I appreciate that you like my art, but, like, I only have so much time. And i got to be selective. And it's just not my style. And I try to, like, recommend other artists for them or whatever. But, yeah, I only have so much time in the day. And it makes total sense it's good like you don't want to you don't want to like stress yourself out too much and then kind of sacrifice the quality of the paintings that you are commissioned for you know for sure yeah that's that's for that's definitely like oh i i i'm really reluctant to take commissions i don't like go out looking for them right and like when when the, but sometimes they just come up like more if it came up and it was just like they were so chill and like cool about it and was like do whatever you want really not didn't really have you know so it's hard to refuse um riddick asked how long it takes me to complete a painting and that's uh probably like i think it varies but to the point now i'm at like maybe 20 to 25 hours for a single okay. painting yeah um the and it, of course depending on the size and amount of detail and stuff like that i've done i've done them in less than that maybe like mm -hmm. 18 hours That's but like good. the preserved and torment one i actually logged my time on it more or less and i think it was like 28 when all was said okay. and done it's good to know so, and that includes like prepping the candidate or the panel and stuff like that right but yeah it's a pain in the ass it is um, it's a long it it's it's it, i typically don't because of that because it's a pain in the ass because like if you're like yeah you just kind of like, you know, you're not thinking about it when you like start to get into something. And then like, if you want to get a drink or like something else happens, you know what I mean? Like, it's not as like clock in, clock out, like fucking work. You know what I mean? Not, not for me at least, but. Uh, okay. So we have uh, another question from Caroline. She's an excellent artist as well. Uh, apologies if you covered this already. I joined late. Sorry. But if there's anything you started doing more recently that you're really stoked on or finding really satisfying to do new imagery, e.g. new imagery. Hmm. Um, I, let's see. I recently, this is, I recently started, uh, drawing like digitally on my phone with just that little like crappy stylus that comes with my samsung galaxy really? whatever the fuck it is yeah um and it's just some crappy like app that i i got for free it's like cool. you know a really shitty version of procreate more or less yeah but i use the, the airbrush tool and the little pen on my uh phone yeah. And it's surprisingly like how fast I can sort of use that to rough out ideas that I might yeah. use like, for a painting like a or a drawing. Thumbnail. That's cool. Yeah. I dig and that. I, I also, I find, you know, it's, it, it, it's not something I would ever use like for a finished piece. Cause it's like no, small. No, no, no. I mean, dude, shitty. styluses are, <laughs> but they definitely, I've like tried styluses and it's, <laughs> You can't just buy but, a stylus. Like it seems like Apple Pencil yeah. has the one up on everything. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm bummed that I don't have that Procreate shit and an iPad to like work with it. Like it's definitely feeling it, like I need to get that shit. So, but stylus. Yeah, I mean, I from what I can do with just this phone setup, like it seems like Procreate and an iPad would be phenomenal. And like, yeah, I always want to be traditional. I want to do traditional mediums and like actual you know i want to have originals that i could keep and one day sell or whatever definitely um but like 
I used my phone recently to sketch out a drawing. I printed it, and then I actually kind of just used that, blew it up to oh. the size of the drawing paper, and then I completed a pen and ink drawing from, like, a crappy phone drawing, and it was the fastest I'd ever done a, nice. like, large, stippled pen drawing. I would love to see so that it's always if, you'd be, if you'd be willing to share yeah, it, like, it, in the messages um, or whatever. Or... Yeah, it was – I did it for – head split records for uh one of their one of their newsletters yeah just recently so if you look up head split their last newsletter was i think some people tagged me in it if you look at my instagram Dang. but you know and yeah my, my drawings my drawing style is like i feel like a little more and like cartoonish than my painting Sure. And I, I, I sometimes I stipple and sometimes I do more like line and stippling. Yeah. I'm, that's something I haven't really figured out yet. Like, I definitely have a lot of respect for folks like you and, of course, Riddick that do, oh, thanks, <laughs> do so much of that work because it's, it's hard. Dude, Riddick, he's, uh, He's like the father of fucking death metal, like skull, trippy skulls and webbing and like all that fucking super influential stuff that you see in contemporary death metal art. And it's just such an honor that he's taking part in this and like actively like he's just asking all these questions. And so, Mark, thank you very much again for tuning in and, and always oh, yeah. like, providing excellent questions. Um, I want to actually do something real quick. I usually mention who our artist is that we're going to be doing next week at the end of the episode, but to throw people off so that they have to watch this shit. I am going to tell everybody what, who my next guest is now. So, because we're talking about it, Mark Riddick is my guest next week. Yeah, sick. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And I hope all of you who are watching now will tune in. Uh, it's going to be really fucking awesome. And I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to make mad notes and we'll get, you know, and <laughs> I don't know who's going to be asking questions because it'll be him I'm talking to. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Uh, anyway, let's, let's, uh, so like. That's, right. that's so cool. Yeah, man, I'm stoked. Uh, I, I'm trying to see, it looks like I, mi we, I missed some questions people asked. Yeah, um, I, did, uh -oh. yeah. I can't, I'm trying to scroll around, but I'm confused. Yeah, go for it. Um, oh, uh, I see one from Riddick. Uh, when you reach a point of frustration, do you discard the painting or push through it? Uh, I've definitely, definitely, there's some totally abandoned paintings in my garage. Um, that was more like from when I, when I first started and really didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, but, you know, I haven't really had the option to discard recently and when i when i do hit a point of frustration which is pretty common um i usually just take a little break from it and come back yeah often it's with oils it's like i usually get frustrated about this this point you hit where like most of the painting's wet and you're not making any progress and you're kind of fighting yourself yeah. you leave you come back and it's dry and then you have a fresh perspective on it sure sometimes i'll hang sometimes i'll hang a painting up too when it's not done and just stare at it. I yeah. it and I'll be, I'll be like, Dude, the TV that's... will be on, and I'm just staring at one of my shitty paintings and going, what the fuck? What am I going to do to make this thing right? No, I'll dude, take that's, like, that's really important to do. Step back. Look at it from other angles. Like, take a second to stop staring at it. Come back. Look at it again. Like, think about what it is you want to accomplish with it. Yeah, that's super important. Yeah. Leave it around and stare at it and get mad at it. That also helps. Yeah, and I've I've taken photos, you know, taken photos, put it into Photoshop, and like tried scribbling on it to like if sure. I want it, if I think I have an idea, but I'm afraid to try it. Yeah. I don't want to ruin it. Do you have like when a on the or or how do you transfer your art to digital the digital realm? Um, the paintings. So that's that was a hard lesson to learn right there. It was like I did the painting, and then I spent a ton of time trying to photograph. Hard, the man, the painting, oil, sure holy not. shit! Yeah, it is such a pain in the ass, and it just it isn't like almost impossible. Yeah, um, you have, to have like the best lighting, like yeah. I mean, I even bought like lights and stuff, like the umbrella little umbrella diffuser thingies, and like yeah, lights on the yeah. stand. 
And I tried to do it and like read a ton. I'd be like going to sleep, just watching YouTube tutorials on lighting for like, you know, painting photography. And the results that I got out of that were just, just abysmal. And I mean, I've tried all sorts of shit. And then I ended up, I ended up just finding um, a place in, you know, kind of near, not nearby, but you know, a couple out, an hour or so from me that it specializes in digital uh, scanning. Like, it's like not photography. It's like this crazy scanning machine that, nice. like, you you know, they do all sorts of wild shit to to cancel out glare and you know light it equally from all angles and stuff. So how much? Is yeah. That so called? it's this place called Bellevue Fine Art Reproduction. Yeah. And they get you like a super high res, really good final scan. I'd love to find something that I'd love to find a way to do it myself. That's not as expensive because that way, like if you just send them one piece to have scanned, it's like a hundred bucks. So that yeah, immediately eats into say, any like, money you and, pay me. And you have to, is, did you say it was local for you or did you have to mail it in? It, it's local. I end up, it's usually like it's an hour or so from me and with traffic and shit, it's easier for me just to ship the damn thing for sure, 12 yeah. bucks to, to Bellevue. Hassle. It always scares me. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, what if my painting is destroyed like, and crashed? That's your baby. Like, yeah, if you miss out on yeah. that and you haven't gotten it, like, actually in a digital, like, format, you're shit out of luck. And, like, dude, I don't know what it's like over yeah. there for shipping stuff for you, but, like, it's kind of a shit show in Philly. I've had yeah. some bad well, shit, like, with posters being sent out, like, crushed tubes and, yeah. So. Yeah, I have that. my... I have a, a lot of prof I have a lot of professional experience in, in shipping, so yeah. I've definitely learned the hard way. Yeah. That uh, yeah. So for that's real. sort of what I've done for a long time. For the um, for work. Or... So. No, like my part of my job, my day job is is shipping. Okay. And warehouse stuff. So. Okay. I you know I know how to pack a painting. I I, I could do it way better than I do, but like. I know to always include a lot of extra, you know, void, void and like padding and, in a, in sure, a, yeah. so okay, I pretty so much bomb proof package my, my shit before I send it out. Cause it's, it'd be so horrible if it got damaged. Right on. Um, well, so something I might suggest is reaching out to other oil painters that are doing things in like, like a current, you know, album cover, uh, like, realm you know of things like maybe reach yeah. out to paulo i know i know like i have friends that are like <laughs> always letting paulo stay at their house you know what i mean like, <laughs> I probably get you connected and you could talk to him and ask him how he yeah. transfers his oil paintings to digital media yeah i sent i i have sent him a uh, direct message on instagram before like hey, like what kind of paper do you use for your paintings I've asked him questions. I asked him one question before. He got I back haven't got a response. From him. Uh, no. Right. I'll try again. No, I, I probably just that. over. I probably just came off as a Punisher and wrote too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely like. If anyone knows, if anyone knows anywhere in Washington that does like good photography for paintings, I've, I've posted this, but like I don't know any painters that you know are local. Yeah. Um, if anyone knows. Yeah. Yeah, and I've actually seen Dedo is saying guys. Adam Burke. Adam Adam Burke is awesome. Hell yeah. He does photograph his own stuff and he has a really good job. I would love to know what he does. I think he's I've seen him say that he takes his paintings outside. And like it's like a daylight. Yeah. Yeah. Um I mean, but I'm maybe he's just always wondering about glare. Like that's oh, like God. yeah. Maybe the way he paints makes it easier to photograph and I use too much like medium or some shit and it's too glossy. I don't know. But when I tried to do it, it was awful. Like I've never, I got, I was so far from producing any sort of an image that would ever be considered like a reliable translation of the painting. So well, I for mean, now, I'm glad I mean, that you expensive. didn't settle. You know what I mean? Because like the, yeah. the final, the final pieces that are representing your bands or, or or your commissions they're fucking awesome like yeah they look amazing so whatever you have done thank you it's worked 
I just know that, like, I'm sure you're looking for a more uh, permanent solution. So. Yeah. Yeah. And in the, in the, the way they scan the art, it's so, the way this Bellevue Fine Art Reproduction Place does the, the scanning, it's, it does, it, it almost like sees through like the layers of paint to the point where it's almost too revealing. Like That's you can see much. all the little yeah. brush strokes and stuff. And like part of what you see in a painting is the reflection of the light. So the scanning process that I use does sort of take something away, I feel like, from the final painting mm -hmm. that I wish I could like, with a, with a really good photograph, I know I could capture some of that. Yeah. Like some of the saturation in the dark colors yeah with the depth i feel like gets lost and there's sort of a flattening effect that happens from the scanning right so like ideally i think i'd want a photograph because the photograph's more similar to what your eye actually experiences when you look at it yeah yeah I, I gotta say, God, like, um, it, it's, it seems like a quite an undertaking and i think that's exactly like the 20th reason why i don't do paintings <laughs> And I just stick to pen and ink, and I I bought like a big ass fucking scanner once upon a time. So yeah, I mean, I, and I remember thinking that scanning scanning my drawings was hard, and and yeah, now it's like seems like a dream compared to trying to get your painting photograph. Yeah, it, the place that I go to, I mean, this is probably the not not the most exciting topic to talk about painting no, production. No. It but is. uh the place that I go, if I if I if I send like two or I can send like two or four pieces in and get them scanned all at the same time, which brings the cost down. But like when am I gonna have four finished paintings all needing to get scanned at the same time? Yeah, yeah. Right now, with the rate that I complete them, not really. But that's why I'm I'm now trying to kind of do like little studies and like my own shit just for fun on the side. Sure. So that if I do send a bigger piece for a band off to get photographed or scanned or whatever that I might be able to send a few other pieces with it and bring the cost down for myself. Right. I want to scroll up here and just see if we have questions or I know we have yeah. some comments. We've got, okay, so, wow, all right. Um, how's the final artwork submitted? We did that kind of uh, staring at it in a mirror. I guess, yeah, let's cover that real quick. Mark asked, how is the final artwork submitted to your customer? Like, are you giving them out like JPEGs, like high, high res? Like, probably, right? Man. That's what you sent me, so. Yeah, so you might, you may have noticed from the way that I sent my files to you that I, I'm i not the best at, like, packaging up digital files and sending them to Exporting. people. Like, yeah, 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 like, that's something that, well, I've, like, fucked around in Photoshop forever, you know, and done a lot of digital, you know, photo manipulation and editing. Yeah. Like, that's something that I never really bothered to learn or was taught is like yeah. how to properly save and format images to be you know so like when i've worked with designers like graphic designers like sending my art to them they're like they're always getting annoyed at the way you know i it's just like i i need i really need to learn how to do that better so um, yeah, but, there's really only a few things that are like rules of thumb that i keep in the back of my head um because i'm a goddamn caveman about this shit but yeah, I probably should have retained some things in school. Uh, <laughs> exporting, I usually just like I, I'm learning that like like as far as like making sure that your art looks good. Obviously, never size up once it's been sized down. But mm -hmm. you're gonna oh, yeah. change the resolution if it's constraining the proportions um, evenly. But like what you sent me was like a 72 DPI image, but your shit was like 33 inches big. So like <laughs> yeah. I was able to turn it into 300 DPI at like 10 whatever. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I was able to like change the way that that works. But dude, I'm in the same boat. Like it's not easy for me to understand that shit. I YouTubed it once. Like you can always do that. You can rely on people that are just like break it down. But um. But yeah, like it's it's really the biggest thing is like making sure that you have a 300 DPI uh, resolution when you're sending digital files uh, at the least. If you're doing like tape yeah. and CD, like like format vinyl, sometimes 600 DPI is what they would prefer as in the pressing mm -hmm. plans. 
So I'm learning that. I didn't know that. I didn't know 600 DPI wasn't extreme. Like now I'm no, like now I know, like even for a cassette, like 600 DPI is like something that they say, like in the liner notes of like their specs in certain pressing plants. And I didn't know that. I was like, what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. You know, so like, yeah, it's always good. Like whenever you have a pressing plant that you're specifically working with, jump to their page where it's like their specifications of like how to upload it like in the templates yeah i mean and i've i've yeah. attempted some of that stuff but luckily like you know my bands have a you know true pro graphic designer that, That's that awesome. does all that stuff for me i definitely need to learn myself because there's a lot of times when i'm just submitting stuff to bands yeah. The way that I actually turn turn my files into bands though and submit them is I basically just take the the Dropbox link that I get from the scanner that's just the raw image, mm -hmm. full resolution, um, and and send it to them. And then I'll then I will uh, do like a color correction myself, or sometimes the uh, their designer will do it because right. like the way I get the images back from the scanner it always looks way different than it does in my in possession. Yeah, you want so to kind of it. Yeah, I'll tweak the colors and be like, this is what it really kind of looks like to me in, when I see the art in person. Um, and then I don't want to tell them what to do. They can kind of make, you know, a little different if they want. Right. But for the most part, I just give them the raw file, which always looks kind of fucked up, but colors are always off. But I mean, I usually get a good result. Comes out sick in the end, and we know yeah. because we see it, so. Thank you. The And the, the resolution, the, the, the scanner does, like, if I send them a 20 by 20 painting, I get a 20 inch by 20 inch 300 DPI file back. That's a nice large image. That's a lot. It's yeah. a large file too, though. Yeah. Do you do you ever have to send through WeTransfer? Are you always doing uh, Dropbox? Um, I've done Dropbox. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out what the best thing is to we use. Transfer good for large files. Mm -hmm. Like one. So I, I did get a Dropbox through. And you can do like it's free, so you don't have to like. Sign yeah, up for it. I know. Usually, I've, my experience from WeTransfer is 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 for like mixing and mastering records where yeah, we're sending that, yeah, huge exactly. wave files back and forth all the time. Very my phone files was, as well. So. Like just the other day, I, I went through and deleted like gigs of old wave files from mixes of my band's albums. Yeah, I was like somehow going need. to some hidden folder on my phone and taking up all my all my data. So don't I know it, dude? I I uh, know. Yeah, it's crazy. Up. I'm horrible at just file management and like file organization too. And I can Me imagine too, for someone like you, God, that must be such a bad like for pro, for professionals, people that are doing art full time. Like you know, um, it seems like that's got to be a lot of what your what it's, your job it's entails. Certainly an undertaking. It's something that I put off. Like I like some days I'll be like, all right, it's like fucking spring cleaning day. Like I gotta like organize some shit, get rid of some files I do not need. Like give my computer a yeah. fucking break, like, <laughs> take away some of that yeah. extra shit, that fodder. But, uh, all right, so, yeah, no, honestly, that's really fascinating to me because I don't know, like, what it's like to have to go through that process as far as transferring your files or transferring um, your, your media to digital media. So that was that I, I appreciated that just to know like what that's like. But I really do suggest maybe hitting up it's up. some other contemporary artists. I'm going to try and get a hold of Apollo for you, man. Like, I think I, I think <laughs> like, I think he would certainly help you with this. Like, he's done so many oil paintings for so many fucking album covers. Like, yeah, like it, it, I feel like we could. Sorry, get that going. Which, but, who, who, who are you referring to? I I. I read Detta's comment and laughed and didn't hear what artist you're talking about. Paulo Garardi, like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, wait, yeah. So I, I, that, that I guy's missed phenomenal. Some comments. Sorry. Yeah, and there's I've seen a lot of comments, um, you know, about like different photograph photography techniques, and I appreciate that. I definitely tried a lot of those, and I think I just what it boils down to is I just suck at doing it. So maybe more practice. It's it also rains so much. Like, like, that's, that's, so that's the beauty of, music. like, that's the learning curve. Um, all right, so, wow, cloudy days. 
our best <clears throat> conditions. That's interesting. Um, For sure. And that's Ian. Claw8, he's a sick artist. His name is Ian. He's a friend. Uh, so Caroline said, I think he does a lot of work in acrylic, so it might be different. I thought he did oil. I don't know if he's ref if she's referring to Paulo or... I th oh, maybe yeah. Adam Burke, and I, I'm pretty sure Adam Burke's oh, acrylic. Oh, possibly, yeah. Yeah, Burke, I definitely... Yeah, I love Adam. Acrylic. Um, Caroline asked, what you doing for fun right now? Uh... Mm. Good question. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty busy. I mean, I, I, uh, I got a full-time job, two bands. Um, my hobby kind of is, like, what I do for fun is art right now. That's awesome, man. I think she was asking specifically, like, what what things you're working on for fun, like, art-wise. I don't know, though. Oh. Like, you were, oh, saying, yeah. you were um, saying, like, you were doing something for fun or whatever earlier. Yeah, yeah, like I've done just like little, well, I'll do like little palette cleanser like studies where, you know, if I finish a big painting or I get, if I get sick of working on the one, on a commission, I'll switch over to like a small panel I just have laying around and just kind of ran, just start, you know, randomly yeah. painting some shit. Yeah. And I'm, I, I did one of those, I posted like a work in progress photo of one that I was doing the other day recently on my, on my Instagram. And it's just whatever comes to mind. I just kind of try to use up whatever paint's left on my palette. Right on. Um, just go to town. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, usually I just, just put, the, put the music on. and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Oh, so uh, yeah, as far as music, what are you listening to right now? What are you fucking jamming? Oh, God. Um, you know, honestly, I haven't been listening to music f that much for fun lately. Um, we we there. just got through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not that I don't want to, um, but there was just so much. Spent a lot of time working on the um, Mortiferum record, listening to that repeatedly over and over again. Sure. Um, honestly, that kind of thing sort of burns my ears out for a while. Yeah. Um, and then I always just revert back to listening to you know shit that I've always listened to. I haven't really been as good about like looking up new bands or, you know, spending time like going and discovering new stuff. So it's usually like stuff my bandmates tell me about. Sure. Um, Dude, I've been there, man. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's definitely overwhelming. It can be like, there's a lot of fucking crazy music being produced and like, it's hard to keep up with. And sometimes you just can't, you don't like you know you don't need that extra like over you know that over stimulation or whatever but definitely some sick shit going on yeah for sure i mean and that's a tough one because i could just kind of start listing you know listing bands and then i'm like oh shit i gotta like make sure to include everyone that i you know i definitely right. there's a lot of sick northwest bands that i'm sure you're aware of you know cerebral rock for one, fetid. Hell yeah! Recently, yeah. we played a first show in a long time with this band, Cystic. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, and then there's quite a few death metal bands in the in Washington that I haven't got to play with yet. I'm looking forward to. Just you know, it's been weird not being able to play play shows for like a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what's in the works for uh, uh, Caustic Wound? Is there anything going on with you guys right now, or are you just kind of <laughs> Yeah, so um, we're 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 practicing and, and just working on writing. We do have a potentially a gig coming up soon. First one, I mean, first one in a long time. Um, and we've just been working on songs, trying to you know prepare material for another release, whether that be a full length or or what um, something. I ho I'm hoping we can get get a another full length together and and record yeah. it. That that, that whole thing sucked because posture. you know Dead yeah, is in here right now. Shit is fucking punishing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that album's awesome. Um, it sucked because we like right when it came out, like that's when basically COVID became a thing, and our yeah. our album release show was one of the first. Frozen, you got frozen. I'll wait. I just want to be. And plan the whole thing.
COVID happened, we didn't get to, we were robbed of our of our right to have our album released and sort of celebrate our our record that we made. So that I'm hoping That's we can bummer. make another one, make another one and put it out and actually play shows would be sick. Right on. Yeah. yeah, we've got we've got quite a bit of material lined up already for another release, which is That's awesome. Sick, dude. Did you but, start uh, Caustic Wound, or was that another like joint effort? Um, I mean, I'm I would probably I probably will never on my own solely like take credit for starting a band. Well, no, I, um, I guess not. Like, I wouldn't want to say like, oh, yeah, because like I couldn't say that I started Bloodsport. I just meant like. Was this something that you came into the fold of someone else's project, or is it something that you uh, were like, I want to do this with whoever? Yeah, the second part. Yeah, so well, I'm I'm pumped that, like, you know, both Mortiferum and Caustic Loon are both bands were, like, you know, I, they were both things that I really wanted to do musically, like, and I was part of the, you know, formation of, of the band, and in luckily i had people around me that were like-minded enough to also like really want to do the same thing um so we pretty much yeah. formed that band with the idea to do almost exactly what we what we were doing now um and right. that was always how it's, from the start um really how caustic wound started it kind of started like i had you know the drummer casey um had lived in new york for 10 years or so like something like that and you know i went to high school with him and knew him way back and he came back to seattle we we jammed in seattle for a while and did a different band that never really did anything and it was uh, sort of it was dude, really was similar that's been, do you have a release out from that band no you didn't do no anything? Um, no, we never, we never, we played one show and we recorded a little thing that was never released. At least I don't think it was ever released. Um, but it was similar. It was similar to Caustic Wound, but it had sort of more DB and sort of punk stuff going yeah. on with it too. And it was weird because like we didn't have a vocalist and then we found a vocalist, but we didn't really, I, I didn't really practice with them until we recorded. And then Casey moved back to, no, Casey went on tour forever. And then that kind of fell apart mm -hmm. when he came back and finished his, you know, touring the world with various bands. Um, we got back on it and that's when Max joined, right and, you on. know, we were already doing that together and good friends. And yeah, oh, we yeah. pretty much were set right away on kind of doing what we were doing. Nice. I think there was maybe a little, it started off a little different, maybe a little bit more. Like, I remember a couple of practices, I kind of felt like we were writing, like, new metal songs. <laughs> and we had, like, we were really into uh, Utopia Banished, the Napalm Death record at the time, I remember. Yeah. And, like, kind of were trying for that a little bit more. But once we just started jamming, it just kind of came together. And yeah. It was what I mean, it is now. What has come together sounds fucking awesome. So... Yeah, that's rad. Um, cool, dude. I mean, uh, is there anything that you want to talk about? Because I have kind of run out of notes, but I'm definitely like, I'm looking like to still <laughs> hang for whatever. I mean, I think it's only six thirty. We usually go for like, I mean, if you're if you're okay with it, we usually go to like I don't know seven fifteen seven whatever. Yeah, no. Like that, but. No. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, you were saying when we first started the the thing that you were like, you know, I think you you had like more people that are more first and foremost artists, and then probably most of them, a lot of people on your pod, your your thing have already been also been musicians. Um, and for me, like I'm, you know, I'm a fanboy of like Riddick and like people that do the art part of it. Yeah, I've been doing, you know doing music for a while but art's always been sort of like more of a hobby for me um sure. so i have a lot of questions about um like what it's like being a you know more or less a full-time artist doing doing you know metal art i can't say i'm a full-time like artist um i do have a part-time job uh 
unfortunately, uh, that's just the way things are right now. But I'm honestly not like I don't hate it because I kind of like that 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 like that world just to like keep things like interesting. And it it's you know a consistent paycheck or whatever, and I don't mind doing the work. But like when I'm when I'm doing art here, like yeah, it, it's it's what I want to focus on, and I want to get to that point. And I think that's that's a, a big part of why I do this because I'm looking to get inspired and learn things about other artists that are full time. And I, yeah. I've like talked to several artists that are full time artists and. Yeah, it's just uh, it, it's where I want to be at one, at some point. So, um, I mean, as far as what it's like, I do what I can when I can, and it's pretty much art anytime I'm not working. Like even either that or, or music, and it's usually I. I mean, I have band yeah. practice with Bloodsport every Friday, <laughs> and then like throughout the week luke will be just like hammering away at guitar shit recording shit all the dude he comes home and he fucking plays guitar from like the minute he walks in the door to the minute he gets into his bed like he's just constantly riffing and it's it's fucking it's a it's it's beautiful because like all i have to do is be like oh play that whatever <laughs> but like any time outside of that, yeah, I'm, I'm down here just like kind of making myself put stuff out, do something, and I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's what I want to do, and I'm happy I'm not doing a full time gig because I used to, and it was really hard to keep up with art commissions and and like feel like I was doing the work that I wanted to create for people in a timely manner that like didn't make it seem like I was like dragging things on and on for people. I constantly felt that weight on my shoulders and I was like never feeling really satisfied with the end product because like, I felt mm -hmm. like I was like, like reluctant to get back into it. Cause I was tired because I was, you know, whatever, like it's a draining day. If you're working an eight hour shift every fucking day of the week, and you only have such a For chunk sure. of time to do all your errands on the weekends. I have days off in the middle of the week specifically so that I can, like, get shit done that you can't do in the weekend. And, mm. and then on top of that, just like, like I said, like, any time I'm not at work, I'm down here doing something for someone or myself. Like, just creating, just making anything. Like, and yeah, I, I, I love it. I want to do it all the time. Like it's, it's something that obviously like if you're like, you can get sick of like sitting in front of a desk. So I go like upstairs and I'll turn like YouTube on and I'll throw on like, I, I just started looking at electron microscope uh, uh, images of like bugs and like bacteria <laughs> and shit. Yeah. And I'll just like sit there and kind of like, like get inspired and sketch that shit out. Like, yeah, I, and, and, and that's partly because I'm learning from these different, like, artists that I'm talking to. Like, that one was Lucas Court, Shoggoth Kinetics. Like, I love his fucking compositions, his work, his weird, strange, alien, you know, H.P. Lovecraft, totally. like, style. And it's and it, and you can see, like, if you look at... um if you look at those like electron microscope images of things like zoomed in like 70 times or whatever, and you see like the face of a fucking bug and it's just like crud all over its fucking mandible and like, you know, like the inside of a stomach and it's just like this webbing mucus and like fucking like weird, you know, like stuff you can't like, see <laughs> like you mm. it's in your like fucking like all the way embedded in your skin and shit like that like that stuff is like the perfect like uh material to pull influence from to get inspired by so um that's been that's been consuming a lot of my time lately especially with my girlfriend erica we just like watch youtube like <laughs> fucking electron microscope <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, look at that. Oh, fucking crazy. Yeah. 
I could def I could definitely see how your your work is influenced by that sort of stuff. It's a lot of like really close up to organic, you know. I want to get more into it. Like, I feel like I'm not there yet, but yeah, like that's that's definitely a huge influence. It's just like nature and just like the the wonders of like fucking the macrocosm. Like, it's just yeah, crazy shit, man. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and I when I was saying, like, full-time, like, I know, like, you know, a lot of people that I consider, like, full-time artists, I really mean, like, prolific artists that really, you know, make it a, a thing. And, like, you right, know, I, right. from what I've learned, more more often than not, people that I think of as full-time artists do have par at least part-time jobs. Some of them have, like, full-blown careers yeah. and still manage to do a bunch of art. That's shocking. That, that right really, like, yeah. yeah. Isn't he, like, a teacher? He's a fucking teacher. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then there's also, um, oh, man, uh, Nev, gruesome graphics, full-time job. He fucking draws, like, on the fucking train to work. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I, right. I, I watched that. That, that was really yeah. that was part of what I was actually referring to, I think. But, yeah, that, that kind of shit's crazy to me. I mean, like, mostly what I... What I I hope to be able to do, you know, is is produce enough work that like I actually it I don't know get some recognition for for my art, and I feel like if I'm just doing like a few paintings a year, you know, it's it's not really anything worth celebrating, and I, and I, I want to be more prolific, so I'm I'm hoping to get you know more stuff done this year. Good. I mean, well, that's also, that's, that's why this is, I think this would be helpful in that sense too. It's getting more people to see that you're doing this and like, you know, hopefully you get some cool commissions out of this. Like, I don't know, but that's, that's yeah. the beauty of the connection of the, the scene mm -hmm. of like, you know, like the underground metal scene. Like I want, you know, we support each other. We fucking, we lift each other up. You know what I mean? So for sure. Yeah. And I'm just like, like I said, I'm, I'm super appreciative that you, that you took the time to do this. Like, I know it's kind of like some artists aren't like interested in doing um, like video and having themselves like on screen, which I understand and can respect. And then other people yeah. don't speak English, which is sad. And like, I'm trying to figure out ways to make all of those things work. Like I've got friends that like would totally do uh, like just a voice thing. And then I've got people that are just like, no, nah, it's not for me. And I understand, but like, maybe they would text it or like, I don't know. Like, I'm still kind of working out like what I could possibly do to like grow this. Like people are suggesting a podcast. I was thinking about a YouTube where like I could feature the art, like on like a slideshow while we're talking or something. It would be yeah. a new project that would take up more time and like I would have to do like less commissions and like I don't know like I feel like I could make something work but yeah like that, that's yeah for that's, sure well yeah I mean I think that'd be awesome I this is the first time I've ever like fucked around with Instagram live or even really I hadn't even used the video feature on Instagram until today I was like you know, send like video chatting with my girlfriend. Like, does this, does this work? <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, well, I'm glad you did like a little like preliminary, like see how it works. Yeah, it's a pretty simple process. And honestly, I didn't know how to fucking do it either until I started watching War Flirts Wednesdays. So once again, thank you, Mike, for like giving me that that um the like the understanding of that being a possibility, like being able to do that. Um, if you don't watch Warflers Wednesdays, it's, it's worth it. It's always an interesting. I'll have to check that out. It's always a good time. Yeah, I mean, you know, for and, uh, I, I appreciate you inviting me on here. You know, like it was like being on a video, being interviewed is like, you know, one of the, you know, it's not something that I normally am comfortable doing anyway. So, uh, and being on video, it's just like a like, you know, it makes me very anxious. So. Okay, Thanks for well, inviting I'm me. Sorry so like... if you anxious. <laughs> no, 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 no. Doing, I think you're doing a killer job, and I really, I do appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, my my point being, like, thanks for thanks for asking me. And when I thought about it, I was just like, why the fuck would I care about you know going on a video interview? You know, and I have to do like Zoom shit for my work all the time. 
and it's, it's the same thing. It's just kind of the way yeah, things are going. So I think the and, format works really well. You have like very supportive people that are here to like, they're interested to know your process, to know like what's going on in your head. And like, yeah, that's what this is all about. Like I'm interested, you know what I mean? That's why we do this. And I think it's just like, uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm learning so much and it's really cool. <laughs> Yeah. yeah I didn't really no, I mean, I'm. Know what to think? To like, yeah. Sorry. What were you saying? Yeah, you've been getting really good, good people on here. Like, I mean, everyone you've had so far is is awesome. So, like, and you're getting good. I mean, I feel like super honored to even be amongst the, you know, the people that you've interviewed so far. So. Well, so yeah. Thanks for that. I, I, well, I think it's I, I it's important to mention just how like like I want it to be a full understanding of like the spectrum as artists like i want people to see where it comes from when it's someone that's questioning how to do things and learning how to how to build and 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 understand their technique and then i want also to talk to people that are like got it fucking down pat and like this is their process because all of that can be used to inspire and help artists get to a, a new level and that's all we're trying to do baby just yeah, no, it's awesome. I love that shit. I love like really niche like podcasts and shit like that. Yeah. It's surprising. Like, the fact that yeah. this even exists is kind of insane. It's like it's such a you know narrow like narrow focus. It's yeah. so specific to my life that it's like how does this even exist? You know, it's one of the cool things about you know social media. And oh, definitely. What's done. Like being able to other bullshit. See there's a community for anything that you like. You know what I mean? Like, see that there's a following for your specific interest, even if they feel like it's su such a niche thing or whatever. But, yeah, no, I think it's a fairly, like, as far as underground metal goes, uh, like, there a lot of people, I find, are interested and want to talk about this stuff. And there's not, yeah, there's not a lot of, like, platforms to, like, learn about it. So, yeah, I hope that's scratching an itch. I suppose it is for yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, no, I love hearing about other artists' processes and, you know, just yeah. anything that I'm super eager just to learn and hear anything about what other art people are, are doing. Sick. And I wish there was more of that sort of stuff. So I always like to kind of look behind the curtain. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to, like, I'm going to work on, like, trying to get this to more people. I want more people to know that this is a thing. Well, but yeah, I mean, like, I think, go ahead, sorry. yeah, like, I, I, I didn't know about it until you asked me to, to go on. And then I went back and looked and like, watched the some of the previous ones. And it's like, as long as they're there to, to watch, I think it'll, it'll should catch on. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, and there's only been so many, you know what I mean? This is episode eight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm stoked to see what happens, you know. Um, let's see here. Caroline says, folks in the metal scene care about this stuff in a way that folks in other music scenes don't, and it's super valuable. Hard fucking agree, sure. Caroline. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. And and I was talking to someone the other day. Um, I was talking to Daniel Shaw about this. The, the almost the, like, it almost seems like for a lot of people, especially in, like, a metal underground scene, a metal under like uh, an, uh, uh, an appreciation for metal music. The first thing that draws them toward a band is the visual art that represents that band. And so, like, for you're sure. walking in a record store or you're, t you're trading a tape, you know, in the 90s or the 80s or whatever, and so on and so forth. And, it, and you're seeing it pop up on your screen and fucking Facebook or whatever. It is the art that's representing the fucking music before you're even hearing the music sometimes like yeah i would say primarily oh, like yeah. for sure it's also something yeah, I, mean, that... I want to point out it's super fucking important and i'm not coming after anybody specific but i've been seeing it and it's so it's a bummer and i think caroline touched on this point about everyone like in this scene it, it, it's it's important to them and 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 they care so let's fucking show it by labels and people that are showing these art 
these these pieces that are representing their bands, bands alike. Like, credit the artist, put it in the post, For sure. tag the artist, take the extra three seconds to use who you definitely know because you commissioned them. Just provide that information to the people that are being drawn in to your music with their visual. Uh, you froze, so I don't know if I froze. I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm not sure. Did you hear what I was saying? Because if I. Yeah, take Can you hear me the now? extra three seconds to, to know, like, to use the name of the guy that you have been talking to for months or weeks or whatever. Credit that artist. Make sure that they are getting sure. the credit that is due to them because without that shit, people aren't, you know, that's 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 what's drawing them in. You know what I mean? That's, oh, we got a sick new shirt design. Cool. Who the fuck did the art? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, sick, a new full length from my fucking favorite ass bands. That's a rad fucking piece of artwork that's representing it. No credit. Like, what? No. Like, no. In a scene that cares so much. Like, why? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Just yeah. an important reminder to anybody. Just take the ex take the time. If you see that, just say it in the comments. Hey, who did the art? Tag them. Post it. Whatever. Edit it. It's not hard. <laughs> For sure, yeah. I mean, and that I was listening to that when you're you're just talking about like how like you know fifty percent of the what you what you're experiencing is the art as album art, and you know I just brings me back to like when I was like a little kid. i still you know I was drawing skulls and obsessed with like gory shit and nightmarish stuff. I would just go you know yeah. anytime I was able to look for CDs, I would just look for like the coolest album cover and. You never know from the cover when you're flipping through stuff I like who did it. Across the board, and it, yeah. I didn't yeah. know unless I owned the physical copy. I didn't know who did art until you know, like Metal Archives exactly. became a thing and tagging everyone in there. So, same thing with like, you know, just browsing like the you know I've got a bunch of my VHS tapes and stuff behind me. Most of a lot of these I haven't even fucking seen or they're dog shit movies, but they just have really awesome covers that I where I was drawn yeah. to. Yeah. And like exactly. the same thing of like you know browsing the the video store as a kid. Right. And just having nightmares about what you saw on the back of the box or whatever and yeah. without even seeing the movie. Exactly. Um, and then and yeah, you crediting is really important. whether or not you liked it after that. But that's what's drawing you in. Like, shit, man. Th that's For sure. what I am so perplexed by. Like, every time I see any art representing any media, why are they not credited on like movie covers? You know, why are they not like, why is there not a fucking art by on the back of the fucking RCA information? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. it, it, I don't know. Like, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Like even photography, like, I don't know. That's a little bit more of a corporate game. Like when, it yeah. Oh, that's a deep. Yeah. There's a long, there's a lot to that. I think too, for sure. And there's, you know, there's like, Plenty of artists that have been basically exploited for for their stuff and never credited properly, or like they don't own the rights to their own image. Yeah, yeah. They may be sold for nothing. That's like super popular. Right. So yeah, all that stuff. Really cool. I think that what you're saying about like being drawn to an album from the art to you, it's also that just the the art, like for me, anyways, really has a huge role. You froze again. I'm just gonna wait. I, I like. I don't want to assume. Can even like color the sound of the of the band. Yeah. So, like it's all it's all part of this overall presentation of like what, the feeling you get from the band. Exactly. So like you know, when I think of like a lot of like the Finnish death metal and stuff that I like, mm -hmm. there's a really common theme of like these weird ethereal creepy album covers that are sort of otherworldly and like. Yeah. Like totally totally <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, what the fuck is going on? It's not yeah. like someone with your head chopped off necessarily. It's like, where is this weird realm that these people are? Yeah. And yeah. that's like, I kind of have that that feeling when I'm listening to that that music. Exactly. And it's impossible yeah. at this point to know. It's it's definitely present in the music too, like the riffs. But like, because of the art and the way it interplays with the riffs, yeah. it sort of yeah, creates it this weird aura of it. Yeah. 
And that's super important. That's like with mortiferum, you know, I was, I think the reason I even did the art was first off because like my band was really awesome and supportive and encouraging and just willing to like let me try to do the art, which is sick. Um, I wouldn't have blamed them for not doing that because I didn't really have much to show in terms of like my painting experience. But just like having a feeling of what I wanted the art to look like that I, I was afraid of like trying to have another artist do it and like afraid that I would get too involved and with specifically how yeah. I wanted to do And like just, you know, my even biggest nightmare was like having some really awesome artists that I love reaching out to them and then having them do it, but not have it not look the way I thought it was supposed to look. Yeah. And always yeah. feeling good about it. Yeah. No. But totally then again, right. maybe I could have not done it and it would have been way better and we would have a different, you know, vibe altogether. So. Right. Yeah. No, I mean like that's, there's definitely something to be said for mm. wanting to see the whole vision through. Like, like it, it, you are in the band, you know what you want to come across when people are listening to your music and you don't want it to be misrepresented even if it's from someone you really respect as an artist you know what i mean like even if it's like someone you you really feel like you'd love to see their art interpretation of your stuff if it's not what you want to show like if, if it's not what you want to be tied in with your music then yeah I, I i totally understand that and and like chancing that yeah there's there's a big chance that it might not be what you want it to be so if you really if you if it's really important to you that that's the same thing with me like from the get-go when i started blood sport with uh with luke and chris like i i, I told them like i mean i was already like doing fungi like oriented artwork <laughs> but I was trying to push it even like weirder and further. And I was like, I want to be in a, like a, a parasitic fungi death metal band. And that's what the, the <laughs> premise was already decided before we even laid the music out. And, and so like with that, like we started to shape things and they started to come up with concepts and ideas. And like Luke is a huge proprietor of, making sure that the vision is seen all the way through as far as like painting a, a, a musical picture. Like we're, we're taking a lot of extra time with this full length that we're putting out to tell a story, a fucking disgustingly fucking haunting story. And we want to use the music to tie in with the art. So I have to start really wrapping my head around how I'm going to represent that. But also, like what you said, your band's super supportive of you doing the art. I was like, hey, should we get like, you know, like Riddick to do something or whatever? And they were like, we want you to do the art. Like, we want you to do all the art. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. I, like, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I still think I could nudge him and get him to do a Riddick piece for us or something. But <laughs> get him to yeah. a, a, a green you know. for, you know, to get a Riddick piece or whatever. But like, which would be an honor. But, um, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, I think like, I, to I, I totally agree that like, if you're, if it's your fucking baby, if it's you, that's like producing this thing, like you don't, you don't want to settle for something that isn't speaking that vision. So I get that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like bittersweet because part of like, you know, my love for, for metal and just music in general, it's like, it is a reverence for that, for, for art, like all the artists that are part of it. So like, I also, while I, I'm really stoked that I've been able to do the art for Mortiferum, yeah. I like also wish that I could like help, you know, be more of like a, a patron of all the like sick pro artists out there that have been doing it for a long time. So I, I still want to like work with other artists somehow with, with my bands, but yeah, I've kind of like fucked myself on that one by doing it. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely artists Maybe that I would love for us to be represented by as well. Um, I don't think they're going to be like, no, we're putting our foot down. Like, you have to make all of the art. But it's nice to know that they believe in me and like and support me to do the representation part of our band. It's like, for yeah. Sure. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I think it's a good feeling coming from your your guys's, you know, your uh, yeah, your end of the spectrum too. 
Um, yeah, and I, I'm sure there. Are, I'm sure there are more, probably a, a lot more bands that actually do their own art. Like I don't. There's there's probably a decent list of of bands where a member does their art, and I, yeah. I something that I'd be interested in, like actually looking into. Because I do. Know, I feel like. I feel like with metal, with my, at least people that I know and from the metal scene, there are a lot of people that are like good artists. Yeah. Maybe they don't do it. For, you know, they don't do that much of it, but like. I'm always surprised by just, you know, friends or bandmates that I'm like, holy shit, you did that art? And then, yeah, a lot of people do the right. art for their and demo. And like, like, yeah, I guess. And it's just, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's cool because, you know, not everyone has to have, like, this big artistic platform. It, it kind of adds to the mystery and, and, like, the mysteriousness. And it's, like, it's cool. It's, like. I don't know. I, 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 I can appreciate that for sure. Like it's it, not everyone needs to be like in the limelight about their art, but, or like really like, you know, go that, that, that path. But I think that you like saying that you want to be more prolific with your art, you want to be, um, you want to be doing a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, I support that. I want to see that. I definitely want to see that. Um, and I, and I can see it happening for sure. Like your process and your technique is developing, you're understanding more how you want to execute things. And like, and, and just like that specific, that style that you have is like I said, I know, I don't know, like someone said something like the word unique. I think it was like Luke. He was like unique is such a, I don't know. I like the word unique, like your word, your, your work is uniquely you. Like no one can fucking look like your work. Like, specifically you, I oh, feel like you. Have, you have just, like, this sick style that's, like, I don't think anyone looks like your work, which is really, really fucking cool. So keep doing it. It's rad. That's that's really cool to hear. Yeah, I mean, I it's, for me, like, it feels like I'm just doing, like, a, you know, Dekshinsky meets Giger, but poorly. So it's yeah. good to hear well, someone no, say that it has a film. I mean, I think... I think for probably for a lot of artists, there's that feeling, you know, I, I definitely get like that sort of imposter syndrome. Sometimes you're like, fuck, am I yeah. think I am doing this shit? Dude, um, but yeah, it's good to I, hear. I, and I know that's part of it. I hope I can think of, uh, you know, and I, I hope that when I, if I do, if I am more prolific with it, that I can like keep thinking of new ideas. So right now it's well, like, uh, do a bunch of squiggles will. and put a portal in the middle, you know, put you'll, a hole you'll, somewhere. You will. You just don't, don't say you hope. Say you know you will. Yeah. Manifest that shit. Drippy shit, skulls, and portals. Yeah. Just fucking, just jump into one of those portholes and see what happens. <laughs> For sure. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look at more. Uh, Bix yeah, I've been. I've been a. Bixinski. Yeah, Bixinski. It's spelled like Bexinski. Yeah. Yeah. Look that oh that guy's work is so insane. It is. It's dope. And I might I might like Next. I might send you a few artists that I think you might like to. Um I can't think of them please, off the top please. of my head. And yeah, I've got yeah, one like anyone in the comments do. Of... What'd you say? Yeah, for sure. Oh Is yeah, I I'm back? all for it. you know, there's there's so many I wish I knew more like you I w there's so much art out there that I don't know and like so many artists that I know have seen but I don't know the name of them mm -hmm. and I'm really hoping to try like I'm really trying to like get more you know competent and like familiar with it make it, the internet's making it so much easier now to like exactly. find all that shit out, out so. yeah Instagram's a, a great tool for understanding and connecting and like um like yeah we all have our gripes about Instagram but the thing is like it's it's really helpful in growing a community of like-minded uh, uh, people that are interested in the same things, um, and especially in like a death metal setting. You know what I mean? Like for us specifically, like that embrace death metal, or or you know just heavy music in general, black metal and fucking you know death doom and doom alike and whatever. Um, and it's just like. Yeah, now more than ever, like, there are so many fucking artists out there that are just mind-blowing, like, the work that they're creating, 
and it is super overwhelming and not easy to remember who is what and who did what. So Instagram is helpful in that you can see that this is them, this is their world, this is where they exist, and you can go and look at them and understand what they're doing. And But it is a lot, man. Like, it can suck you in and make you, like, there's a, yeah, there's a negative side to all that where, like, past, like, wanting to, like, feel like you're worth something, like, like validation-wise with that, like, I think, like, the comparison thing for artists is a huge hurdle. And, like, oh, he's awesome. Fuck, I'm never going to be that good. Or, or uh, you know, dude, she's got, like, this incredible fucking technique. How the fuck does she do that? Like, but that's, like, that's kind of... I think that's the double-edged sword of, like, anything creative. Like, you just can't let that comparison cripple you. Oh, yeah, You have yeah. to get past it. You have to be able and, to and for me, like that and just believe in yourself and, like, make something and not throw it in the garbage before you present it to other people because someone out there will appreciate it. And from that appreciation, like, your confidence will build up a little bit. Oh, thank you. Like, I thought it sucked ass. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I guess it doesn't suck that much ass. Maybe I'll do this again. And then from there, it's like, shit, like, people kind of dig this. I'm going to see yeah. where it goes. I mean, and then for so sure. On, I think, know? like, you know, when I see an artist that's, like, super good or has some really insane technique or something, it's – it's always like, shit, how do I do that? You know, if, if I want, if I, it, it, I don't ever think of it as like, oh, I'll never be able to do that. Good. I think That's of like, what would it take if I really wanted to do that? What would, I'm, I'm really interested in like figuring out how that stuff's done. Even if I don't want to emulate it, the style, I'm like really curious, curious about how they achieve it. If it's, you know. Same. That's why painting has been so interesting to me, especially because drawing, I feel like you can look at it and figure it out. But painting, yeah. it's, like, so mystical to me, where it's, like, how the f- – some of the shit, like, like, Bekshinsky, if you look at his work, it's, like, how the fuck did this guy do this stuff? Exactly. I mean, and may- maybe – maybe, Keep going, sorry. Yeah, maybe, like, classically trained – maybe people that went to school for painting and know how, and understand by looking at his work, like, how he did it. But to me, I look at that and go, like, there's no way that this person was able to make this – this art and I, I would like kill for a fucking video of his process that's what i'm Just, saying and that's where instagram is nice because there's an availability there's a potential availability to see that if that artist chooses to say to do that yeah you yeah. know what i mean and you could always reach out and be like i would love to see a video and maybe they'll oblige you know what i mean yeah yep yeah. For sure. So, and, you know, talking about, like, comparisons and, you know, comparing yourself to other art, artists and that are more talented. Like, there's this other this other side of it where, like, I get jealous of people that have, like, really dumb art. Like, some, like you know, some death metal art, like, demo art is, like, dumb. It looks like a, a seventh grader drew it. On, like, a you know, just, just a perfectly yeah. right sort of deranged, you know, eighth grader scribbled it on his desk and then they turned it into a into a demo. I'm like, I have a yeah. huge love for that style. And I feel like, you know, sometimes with, I worry about getting to a point where I'm too good at, at painting or, like, creating a likeness that, like, it loses sort of a, you know, authenticity that yeah. I, I like. That's, and that same know, thing, I think, really point. back to, like, and, like, you know, saying that any that even if you don't think your art's that good, that there might be people out there that appreciate it for what it is is, is yes. really important, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seriously, like, whether it's, yeah, and it, and it could touch on, uh, they, it, it could touch any given person so, so many different ways. You know what I mean? There could be, like, mm. some, you know, death metal demo shit that people look at, and they're like, what the fuck? This is silly as shit, but it's memorable to them. And then other people are like, oh, my God, that's, like, the dopest fucking thing. And it's, like, cool, like. It's it's all gonna be like if it's appreciated, it could be appreciated in so many different ways for so many reasons. You know what I mean? That's that's the fucking yeah. awesome beauty of like art because no one can really tell you what you like, and everyone's gonna 
you know, find a value to someone's art somewhere. Like, it could be a fucking turd on a plate. Someone's going to be like, this is profound, and I need to pay a million dollars for it, which is absurd. But, like, that's... Un- Dude, like the, the, the cop, <laughs> the shit, shit fun album art, you know? Yeah, I'd have see album on a plate, I would totally see that as, would... like, a noise, a noise rock <laughs> album. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. that, that What's that? Yeah, and then you could so you could spend all this time, you know, focusing on trying to find the best artist to do your commission, or you could just be like autopsy and just have a turd in some guy's mouth, call it call it done. Yeah, I, I think it all it's all valid. Yeah, it's, it's however you want to represent yourself, but yeah, I mean, yo, this has been really awesome. I I like I love just getting to know like new people and like understanding where they're coming from with things and just like shooting the shit. So I really, really appreciate this, man. It's like, me too. It's, it's very rewarding. To it's do been cool. Things. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's cool. I'm glad like it's, you know, it takes, takes uh, some bravery to like put yourself out there like that and, you know, even request to interview people. And I commend you for that. I'm an extrovert. Seems like it's working out hard, you. So it doesn't feel as hard. But I guess, like, sometimes I'll get insecure about the way I look, but, like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I guess I have Erica to thank. I feel I feel attractive <laughs> to her. So that, that gives me some confidence. I'm like, all right, I'm not an ugly, terrible ogre on here, I guess. Like, yeah, whatever. you know, and maybe, and maybe, like, that will allow you to, like, I'm sure you're, you know, a lot of the artists you interview are probably, I'm sure you'll encounter you know, your fair amount of like in, totally introverted, shut in, like hermit artists too. And it's good to and, break and them out of their, they, their I mean, confines. I, right. But like, I kind of, and, and I hope that shed that's light on them. that they'll want to do. <laughs> but as mm. an introvert, as a hermit, might <laughs> not even come to be, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. maybe, but. I think, you know, I, I feel like I have. I, I think, like, uh, I would say Joe from Nightmare Imagery, he says he hasn't really done much. He's, he's an introvert. So I was, I was you know, really, uh, really glad that he took the time to talk to me and put a face to the name because he does some really awesome, creative, interesting, imaginative stuff. And, like, I don't think he's ever posted a picture of himself or anything like that. And so people got to see, like, this is the dude that's making the thing whatever you know for sure but um is there anything else you want to talk about i think we're at a point where i'm good to call it it's seven seventeen. i usually like to call it around uh, this time I mean, because once, i have to give myself some time to press. yeah my, my phone even though i haven't plugged in is like old and shitty and it's still dying at a rapid you know a steady rate so i, I it's got seven percent left but so if I do shut, if I go dark, I apologize. But yeah, no I really appreciate you having me on here. It's been awesome. I definitely will be looking forward to watching the one with Riddick next next week. Yeah, um, yeah. Gonna go back and make sure I see all of these because they're they've been really awesome to watch. Thanks, man. Like seeing you know, uh, Sawblade on the last one was was really sick too. I've been a huge fan for a long time. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah, um, you know, I think other stuff worth mentioning like the the Mortiferum record november 5th max max corrected me i wasn't sure if it was fifth or sixth for some reason because i'm dumb but that's that's coming out and uh that's you know we put a lot of work into that um really excited about it um you know we we spent a lot of time on it because we weren't able to gig you know we spent a lot of time in the rehearsal space working on the songs we spent an extra long time in the studio just focusing on like minor details and really like taking our time and, and you know working with the engineer to to do everything we wanted try try stuff out um so oh, i think yeah. the, the the end result is like the best thing we've done so far and i'm really stoked on it cool so november that, 5th i mean that's yeah i i really can't wait to more. listen to that man um i'm so glad that you're continuing to do the art for it to keep that in that same realm it's it's so sick 
I'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing what what comes uh, in the future from you creatively, uh, whether it be music or visual art. Um, yeah, it's been absolute pleasure talking to you um, and an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Uh, I hope if you ever come through Philly, I'm yeah, be man, I'm sad yeah. if you don't be talking about playing a show. <laughs> I really hope we, you know, I hope that touring is possible again soon and well it is but you know i hope things open up and aren't weird soon and yeah i can get back to see like actually go back to these coasts that'd be rad um, i got you know my boy hassan over in uh baltimore um he's uh he's con or dc i should okay. say atlas and he's doing something yeah. in maryland but awesome dude yeah he, he, yeah he's the best dude he's He's just a, like such a legit, like hard working promoter. He gives a real fuck about the music that he's putting out. You know what I mean? And he's just like, For sure. super, like he's, he's like a real fucking dude, like a real ass death metal head. You know what I mean? Just really coming through for awesome bands. He's got excellent taste. I really respect him. Um, and I'm looking for I'm sure. Looking, yeah. I'm always like awesome, awesome promoter coming through. What's that? I see. Yeah, I was just saying awesome promoter. Really, really sick. Yeah, love, love like, fun. Arguably the best in the East coast for me, honestly. Yeah. I mean, when we did our, we did a little East coast thing. He, he booked our show and it was fucking phenomenal. One of the best ones on the tour. He reached out to me for a Philly date. So fun. I scrambled to get Outer Heaven, Bloodspore, and someone else at a venue. I couldn't get it together, so you guys ended up playing in North Jersey with Zach Mild and uh, um, Oxlet, yeah. which we put a split out with them, and he's a good dude, and he promotes things really well. He's got some cool booking shit going on over there. Um, and I also shout out to Steel and Bone Productions in Pittsburgh. Like, they fucking rule. Like, uh, we almost – played a fucking show with Structural Voice and Crips. Oh, that sick. That been sick. Awesome. Like, yeah. Yeah, but Hassan, definitely shout out to Hassan. I hope that maybe he tunes in and checks out what we're doing eventually. Uh, but yeah, I'm always keeping tabs and just seeing, like, yo, who's coming through, but We'll see. I yep. would really love to play with you guys in Philly. I would definitely set up that show and I would make sure it was a good one. For sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't do as much of the booking stuff, but you know, I, I see all that stuff going on. So hopefully when we actually have plans, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Vicky's yeah. awesome. Um, thanks Caroline for all the messages and, and Riddick, of course, it's crazy. It's surreal to have, have you even no, commenting no. on this stuff? Yeah, he's, dude, from day one, he's been on here asking so many awesome questions. Like, it's an honor. Uh, it's flattering. It's super cool. So I'm really looking gotta, forward to it. I got to think of some for next week. Yeah. Uh, so once again, just want to say next week, going to be talking to the one, the fucking only, the father of goddamn everything sick, death metal art, Mark Riddick. Um, so please tune in. Uh, share. I will be making a post on Sunday or Monday. It's it. Sometimes it varies. I have to get the images together to post it out. So Sunday or Monday would be great. Um, I'm hoping you know no later than Monday because I always like to have some time between uh, you know that and the day of post. So keep an eye out for that and please share. Please share this video when I post it. Um, I want people to know what's going on. I want people to be more interested. And I always love suggestions for artists to talk to. Um, I'm trying to keep a, a good mix going. And I want um, some badass ladies on here. And I've got one lined up. And I'm really looking forward to that. But I'm not going to announce that yet. Um, please. I also I prompted a, uh, a question. Who's doing sick fucking, you know, death metal or heavy metal art uh, that's just like, crushing it female artist just please let me know because i'm looking them up i'm trying to get a hold of people making making stuff happen for the future so um yeah let me know about that and um and and just once again thank you everybody for tuning in checking it out asking questions commenting showing some love to chase um 
it's yeah, it's been real. Uh, hell yeah, I think I think I'm good to cut it. So like, yeah, well, thanks again hell for yeah, the last man. time. Thank you, and uh, have a good weekend. We'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely be talking to you more. We'll, we'll stay up on things, and maybe uh, you know, I'll try and I'll try and uh, help you with that that being able to transfer your work to a digital uh, source to see like, you know, as far as yeah, like, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get fucking punished by me now. Now that you said that I'm going to be dude, constantly asking for I, I would, how, I would is be, it the right DPI. It would be my pleasure to be punished by you, bud. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, just, and yeah. And if you, if you ever uh, take any, if you ever are interested in, you probably have painted, but, you know, I love to talk about art and, and stuff like that. I would encourage you to try other mediums. And if you ever do oil painting, yeah, maybe I'll be I, at a point I at that time. That I, I can do give. any painting right now, but yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it takes a long time. And like I said, it's you gotta, It's hard to take a picture of the fucking shit. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll keep, keep it up, man. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. Oh, shit. We got Carbonized jumped on oh. here. What's up, Chad? Oh, we're, just, we're just getting done. Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I also got some yeah. love over here, but it's on a sticker. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, man. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to I'll have you sign off, and then I'm just going to thank Bye, my Chad. guys that Bye, are watching. Bro. And then, uh, yeah, I'll post this. I'll tag you. And then whoever wants to uh, share, I really appreciate it. Be sick. What's up, Chad? You? Uh, all right, I'm out. Peace. Okay, cool. Well, uh, once again, holy shit, that was awesome. Really appreciate Chase Slaker taking the time. Uh, yeah, uh, please watch this video if you're just tuning in now. Uh, Chad, if you, if you want, you know, I'll be posting it. Um, and it's always there to share, like put it on a story, tell people that you think would be interested in this. It's all about, you know, lifting up fucking people that are doing sick shit in, you know, this realm of heavy metal. Um, and you know, it was just such a treat to be able to do that. And this was the first time meeting Chase. So yeah, it was an honor. Um, really looking forward to next week with Mark motherfucking Riddick. Let's go. Let's do this shit. Let's fucking get it. Going to be uh going to be asking him how he draws these. These fucking boys right here. This is what uh this is what is most commonly known as a skeleton. Anyway, um yeah, dudes and ladies, uh thank you so much for all of your support, love and time with your eyes and your ears and your all the senses okay cool uh i'll let you know when a smell of vision is a thing and then you can smell this guy's rotting corpse all right peace the fuck out enjoy the rest of your friday i'm out going to blood sport practice we have a show tuesday at kung fu neck bye